one and all as I the family car guy and as you can see uh, because I am a professional driver we are on a closed course today but anyway I want to welcome you guys back to my channel uh, we did just get the suspension upgraded or at least phase one of the suspension upgraded on the C4 because in the week in a, in a week from now we will be at Brainerd International Raceway putting the C4 on the track for the first time so what I did uh, for phase one was I upgraded the original shocks or at least what I think are the original shocks I'm not sure they look pretty old to me uh, upgraded those shocks to the B8 or the Z51 shocks also I upgraded the factory FE1 rear leaf spring to the Z51 leaf spring which almost doubles the spring rate and the and the uh, the spring is a lot more stiff so when you have the car up up on jack stands or up on a lift before with the original spring you could push up on the suspension you could push up on the, the rear axle and you could you could see that get the tires moving up and down it's much harder to do that now with this new z51 rear spring also when we pulled the original spring out which i will see if i can find i think i still have it in my garage uh it's it falls like a wet noodle whereas the the new one is much much stiffer i think it's something like the original one had 168 pounds of force and this one has like 388 pounds of force i'll put the uh specs the exact specs in the uh, description of this video uh, but for now, let's take a look. Let's look under the hood. Let's go and show you guys what it looks like. So here's the original uh, leaf spring. Um, and I believe, like I said before, it's got the 168 uh, pounds of force. And as you can see, it's very, very, almost looks like a, like a bow for a bow and arrow kind of a thing. Very well bowed. Also, I did get the lowering bolts. You cannot see them here, but as you can see, the ride height is pretty much the same as before. Uh, my mechanic recommended to leave it as it was before and then uh, lower it as I saw fit. You know, get used to driving it and then you can you can adjust it uh, to go lower. So that's the plan. So we're going to take it to BIR first, see how I feel, and then lower it later. Because it's not just about looks, it's about performance as well. So just wanted to add that in there. I forgot that earlier in the video. So as you guys can see here, um, nothing super, super spectacular in terms of it looks very different or anything like that. It looks almost exactly the same as the original uh, shocks because I do want to keep the factory suspension or the spec factory suspension type specs. I did not want to go to coilovers. I don't think I'm quite ready for that as a driver, but you can see the new B8 front shocks there. Let's come on to the other side. You can see that guy. Looking nice and clean, in much, much better shape. Um, don't know if you can see the factory setting there. And then if we go around to the back and we look, we can see the much stiffer Hyperco rear leaf spring. Uh, we can also see the V8 suspension, the new shocks back there as well. So much better shape than before. Also a quick history on C4 suspension. So the 1984 uh, C4 Corvette when it first came out was a radical departure from the C3 Corvette in terms of its, its ability to handle. And I'll make another video about this in, in more specifics uh, because I really do want to give you guys the, the all the facts and the specs, but ultimately the, the, the early C4s, starting with the 1984 Corvette, rode really, really hard. Uh, and so, especially for those who had, had been accustomed to riding in a C3. So, as a result, Corvette decided, okay, let's make some varying suspension options and, and improve the suspension technology so that people can enjoy a smoother ride, a more comfortable ride, but still get that great handling that Corvette is known for. So that's when they came out with the um the different suspension levels so you have the fe1 the base suspension which is what i have um or at least what i had when i got the car originally the car was the rpo code for the car's fe1 um they also came out with the uh fe2 and fe3 suspension the z51 suspension uh, and then also the the z07 package uh, that you could get so if you have a uh, 1996 grand sport by the way big shout out to um 
13 Scorpio for getting that 96 Grand Sport. It was an awesome car. Um, I commented on his page. I, I probably couldn't own one because I just want to look at it all day and, and just wait for the value to go up. But uh, that's why I'm really glad I got this car, which if you go and, and watch one of his most recent videos, he talks about how actually he almost bought this car. I, I got there a few days before he did and, and got this one. This car has the LT4 motor uh, and the six speed. So for, from a mechanical perspective, it's a grand sport, but obviously not nowhere close to as collectible or in as good of shape. But anyway, back to the suspension conversation. So um, they came out with the Z51 package and then also they came out with the selectable ride suspension. So I believe that started in 1989. Um, you had the select ride suspension. Now my car does not have that that feature, um, but in that in that suspension, it's, I believe it's the FX3 FX3 suspension. You had the tour, sport, and performance settings, and you had a little toggle switch in the middle in between the seat uh, the the seat uh, controls in the center console. So you could basically change and what happens is there's actuators that are uh, attached to the shock absorbers and then like a little servo that basically uh, adjusts the firmness of the shock um, based on the selection that you, you make so that was also an option I believe I believe it started in 89 like I said I'll make another video to you know commenting more on the specifics but the C4 suspension was so good at one point that Porsche actually lobbied to get the Corvette the C4 Corvette banned from SCCA competition and they were successful at doing that to the point where Corvette actually created their own class. Um, and I'll make a video, like I said, in my in a more specific video on suspension. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that. But So that's why I'm really intrigued. And, and that's why I really, as much as people bash on the C4, this is the reason why I really like, like mine. And this is also coming from someone who owns a C6 Z06. And for those of you who follow my channel, you know that it's out at Race Proven Motorsports right now getting all kinds of uh, upgrades uh, to get the car number one to solve the valve guide issue but number two to to get it to where uh i like it so really excited about that and and driving that car that car obviously handles much better than this car um partially that's due to age and partially that's due to all the things that they learned over the years and the the improvements that they've made but still there's a lot to be said about a car that's much much um there's a lot to be said about a car that is that can that was built from the factory to handle um, in multiple situations and and really is performance oriented even as far back as the 1984 C4. Uh, it was such a radical departure from the uh, 83 C4 in terms of its its handling performance. Uh, and then also keeping in mind about the oil embargoes and all the and all those types of things where where in terms of horsepower, uh, the C4 towards the end of its the C3 towards the end of its life and the beginning of the C4 even. Uh, wasn't anywhere close to 300 and above in terms of horsepower. So uh, I think the C4 is still very, very relevant from a from a handling and a and a, and a autocross and and uh, racing perspective for those people who at least are uh, I would say beginning to amateur. You know, if you're a diehard racer and you you've got much more experience, of course you're gonna you're gonna want more power. You're gonna want probably something a little bit more hardcore. But for anybody who's 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 like me? Who's who's a dad? Who's got a family? Who's just kind of trying to do the best they can to maintain their hobby? Apologies, guys. The uh, camera died. But yeah, for anyone who's just getting into this as a hobby, I think the C4 is a great way to get started uh, in terms of getting experience on the track and autocross, and and still being able to have a car that's very, relatively speaking, affordable to maintain, relative to some newer newer cars, including not just newer Corvettes, but just newer sports cars in general. So that being said, let's get right into driving impressions. actually does not ride that much harder than the FE1 suspension. So for anybody who's got a car, if you look at the RPO code of your uh, C4, if you got the FE1 suspension, you've got the base shocks, uh, which ride the softest and handle the sloppiest. Um, the Z51 
151 upgrade really doesn't do much in terms of ruin the ride quality. So that's a great, that's a great characteristic of going to the Z51 suspension. And I got a good deal on mine. I bought mine from Eckler's, and I think I paid somewhere in the neighborhood of 350. I got a good, good deal on them. Um, and then I paid somewhere in the neighborhood of like 200 for the uh, for the uh, transverse leaf spring in the back. So really, really good thing. Um, let's see if we can, we got here, we've got, we've got the light here, so go ahead and make this turn. One thing I noticed right away, on the corners, the car corners a lot better. Um, it doesn't wallow nearly as much. Yesterday I actually hit a clover leaf um, at, an, at an exhilarating rate of speed, let's just call it that. And the car handled great. Now one thing I will say, if you do the leaf spring, and, and I'm, I don't claim to be a suspension expert, but if you do, if you are going to do the rear leaf spring, one thing I would suggest um, is really driving it for a while in, in multiple conditions. Because what I found is the car has more of a tendency to rotate on that harder leaf spring. Because if you keep in mind, it's not, a, in my opinion, a fully independent hybrid. It's not a fully independent rear suspension because you got the the shock towers that are connected. So basically, if one side of the car gets imbalanced, the other side of the car will react the opposite way. So you know they're 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 directly connected in terms of if one side of the car gets upset versus another. So the car. Uh, on a few turns, I noticed had a tendency to get just a little bit loose. It wasn't anything crazy. It's not like I was facing the wrong way in traffic, but I could feel the tires kind of getting a little loose, losing their, losing a little bit of grip. Whereas before, because the leaf spring was softer, the car kind of just kind of floated and kind of had more of a tendency to understeer through the same corners as before. So uh, I'm still kind of also getting acclimated in my knowledge of, of suspension settings and, and things like that so in terms of looking at um in terms of looking at sway bars also upgrade your bushings as well i upgraded my uh rear bushings i haven't done the front ones yet uh to the uh harder urethane still again haven't really noticed the decrease in ride quality but i have noticed uh, uh just a better reaction to the suspension um see if i can just hold this just a little bit since i'm just on the highway here um, yeah, so that, that's one thing that I noticed that's, that's been great. Also sway bars, like I said, I haven't done those yet, but I do need to look into those and see what kind of a difference they will make. Uh, and I'll know a lot more when I come back from BIR. So, so looking forward to that. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a, of a ramble, but just kind of wanted to give you a breakdown of, of what... Uh, where my suspension is at and and the upgrades I've done thus far uh, There's a lot more to come on the channel. Obviously the Z06 will be back soon uh, And there'll be more things that we're gonna do with the C4 as we as we take it on more adventures So until next time if oh by the way, please uh, like this video leave any comments Those of you who are more knowledgeable than me, please drop your opinions uh, Educate me as well so we can all learn as a community uh, if you are not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware of every video that I put out and when it comes out so that we can grow and learn together. Uh, there's somebody on my tail, so let's see what happens. And uh, you guys have a blessed day. Peace out.